because I I don't discuss uh, Amnita muscaria for using for uh, psychedelic trips. It's very uh, dangerous, you know, uh, because uh, with the psychedelic mushrooms, there is only one psychedelic agent, and we know exactly what could be if you take one gram, three grams, or five, right? With Amanita, yes, with Amanita muscaria, there is no dose you can rely on. Some people can take five, seven grams and go. Phew. Some people can take 20, 25, nothing happened. I collected over 12,000 cases of taking Amanita muscaria in different doses from 1.1 gram to 50 grams. Nobody died but we all had different experience. It's very tricky mushroom because let's say if you took 10 grams, nothing, 15 grams, nothing, 20 grams, nothing. And then over two, three months, you took 10 grams, <laughs> you're gone. And it's not about die because you get poisoned, loaded with chemicals, overdose and die. No, the problem is Amanita muscaria is a uh, dissociative. There is a certain dose in individual for every person when body and mind got disconnected and while the person is tripping somewhere in our worlds, the body becomes extremely aggressive toward itself. People start hitting their heads about walls, they start jumping out of the windows because they totally not connect to their minds. There is no logic. Thinking the person is absent, it doesn't matter if you have sitter or group of people, you behave like totally wild animal, totally uncontrollable, plus it gives you such a strength. I have a report from a girl which could not be calmed down by seven big guys. That's how much strength you can get. And it's really dangerous in the meaning of physical uh, injuries, you know. Mostly 99% of people who went from Amanita trip, we wake up, in totally ruined house or apartment, just crushed. And their urine, their blood, and we don't remember anything what happened. We See, it's, lucky. It's, it's interesting to hear that because I've known of many people to speak very highly of having strong uh, Amanita muscaria trips. There's even a whole person, there's a person on the internet who I've had on the show, Amanita Dreamer, who speaks very highly of these of these trips. And I am also generally you know, pretty resistant to like nightmarish stories as like the default way that, that a trip will go if you take too much. Cause I, I mean, I don't have much experience with Amini Muscaria, so I can't stand by that very strongly, but it is surprising to hear, um, what, what amounts to, I think what you're saying amounts to something like, it's just not a good idea. Shouldn't be done dangerous to take psychedelic doses of Amanita muscaria is that is that what you're okay. saying because like it feels yeah i feel a okay. little un okay. weird about uh, that yeah yeah there is different levels of amanita muscaria trip let's say i have a recipe in my book which amanita muscaria could be cooked with milk and you take it by small shots just like one two sips every 45 minutes or one hour and you cannot have bad experience with it it depends how it's cooked i personally took dry amanita in big quantities and i took a uh, milk uh, prepared amanita mascara we're talking about different things you can have a uh, amanita mascara trip but there is some point in the trip when your body disconnected from your mind totally, that's the danger. If you take, if you know how to prepare the Amanita Muscaria, let's say with milk, it's cooked, 
you can go in a very, very deep meditation state, very deep meditation state. And Amanita Mascaria uh, trip is not very visual. It's dark, it's mostly not uh, linguistic. But I'm talking about taking Amanita Mascaria as a dry or fresh in a big quantities. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes That's that makes I'm sense. Talking about. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. excessive doses. So okay, let me see right. if I get this straight. What you're saying is excessive doses of the compounds, either as a consequence of the variability of the mushroom potency and the variability of the various compounds inside of that potency, as well as right. um preparation method that it's so variable you caution people to try to get high enough to have an experience because it might be too easy for them to go over into an excessive experience at which point it could be quite dangerous is that is that what you're saying yes and and you you uh, people should know how to prepare amanita because you can't just take the quantities i in my book i have reports from real people and i have over thousands of them when they wake up in a psycho world tied up to the bed or we were um running in the forest for three days and woke up somewhere all in blood it's not my it's not my fantasy which i took out of my head this is from real people the real people wrote me about it that's why i have that conclusion it's not like I tried Amanita and I did not have that experience because I took 15 grams, I took 25 grams, and everything was fine with me. I didn't get disconnected. But the thing is, it's, this information was collected. It's not my opinion. It's a, it's a data I got from people. It's a data. And it depends how much do you take to get disconnected totally from this world and leave your body here alone. That's the point. Yeah, and, and I think that's that's a good point. It goes back to you know the value and importance of the podcast you're producing for Russian speaking countries because you know you helped sort of like create a different way of understanding the the nuances of of substance use, the differences between um, you know like organic psychedelics dosing set setting dose or whatever um in contrast to just whatever's flooding the streets so like the 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 harm reduction and benefit optimization sort of potential of solid education is vital especially with psychedelics because you could also take too much lsd and be a harm to yourself and others and wake up three days later in a forest right so I, I kind of I see that point. My initial pushback is what sounded like you suggesting you should never take this in high. You should never take this in psychedelic doses because by default bad things will happen. I hear now that it was actually much more nuanced than that. And I actually also really appreciate the sort of sharing of these experiences. Like, hey, it can get really bad. This is one of the reasons why you want to be very careful when consuming, preparing, and dosing, and really informed because otherwise harm could happen. It sounds like much of your mandate with what you do is an effort to reduce harm for people who want to explore these substances. I just want to tell you, because you're an experienced mushroom um, user, if you take 5 grams of magic mushrooms or 10 or 15, you're not going to try to kill yourself. You might collapse, don't remember anything, wake up in uh, whatever, 5, 7, 10, 11 hours, and that's it, right? But yeah, maybe, when yeah. people, yeah, it's not it's not uh, uh, normal what you're going to cut, let's say, cut your body with a knife, right? But I have so many, I have photographs. It's not just letters what people were writing. I have photographs, people with broken face, smart face, wounds in their palms, in their legs. I have all the... I have a whole bunch of photographs of what people have done with themselves taking big doses. That's why on my podcast, I even don't want to discuss Amanita Mascaria trips. There is a more, let's say, healthy, less dangerous 
clients you can take. Let's say if you want to go to retreat, just take three grams of magic mushrooms. Why you have to take a manita? You never know what's going to be. It's like a Russian ruling. Maybe some experienced people, but I'm going to tell you, I was observing few people on the video during their Amanita trips, you know. Then blood was running through the face. We was on totally uncontrollable. We did, we, after that, we did not remember what was going on with them. And I just want to repeat myself. It's not my fantasy on my own conclusion. This is the data I got. This is what I got. And why people want to go to Amanita experience that if you can go with ayahuasca, you can go take San Pedro or Peyote, or there is a lot of different uh, plants you can use. Amanita is not That's very true. good yeah. psychedelic agent. Why? I mean, it, it, is, it is, however, a different experience, and there are yeah, different, intre yeah. intrepid people that want that experience, and there are obviously, there are people who are outright vocal about it being a beneficial experience, and so I, I see the value of ensuring people understand the risks of what they're getting involved with, as well as the value right. of helping them mitigate that risks if they choose to do so. Um, I don't necessarily right. see the value of just saying no, don't, it's bad, you're going to hurt yourself. But it doesn't sound like that's what you're saying, but it does sound like you're strongly sort of strongly, um, you know, vocalizing how dangerous it can get and thus how, uh, yeah, how dangerous it can get and thus so people can not be ignorant to their choices and can perhaps otherwise choose to maybe steer clear of yeah. something that sounds very dangerous. James, uh, the reason I vocalize it because there is no dosage you can take safely. There is none. We know the dosage for ayahuasca. We you know mean no the sort of pre for... preset dosage, like objective no. dosage? Okay. No, yeah. no. I have a person who took uh, 1.5 grams of Panterina Amanita and collapsed in a supermarket in coma for seven hours. See, see my point, 1.5 grams. There is no individual dose. There is no middle dose which you, which you can say, okay, this is safe and this is not. Because Amanita mascaria is a very different by chemical compounds because of how it was stored, where it was picked up, the level of humidity, the geographical location, how long it was in your storage, how did you prepare it. Everything is changing the chemical compound and you never can guess. Can guess. With the magic mushrooms, you can keep it for a year or two, right? Dry. And you still know the amount you can take safely. And uh, it's not about... Uh, Physical safety with magic mushrooms, it's more mental, you know, the more you take, the more uh, different experience. And if you're not prepared for information, you're going to see that's going to hurt your, <laughs> your brain, uh, but uh, not your body. That's why I want to talk about it, because there is no dose. Like people, somebody can say, okay, ten, take 10 grams of dry manita, you will be fine. Uh-uh. It's different for everybody. Yeah, there's no, there's no, pre, there's no preset dosing guidelines. Yeah. Each each yeah. batch would be new. Each batch is entirely so variable that it's very difficult to assess that. Um, and I, right. I'm hearing that, and I'm I'm really appreciating and seeing and feeling a lot of value in you making that very clear. Uh, yes. <laughs>